Right now at 6 o'clock, deadly gunfire at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Breaking news. Panic, terror, and tragedy. A gunman opening fire on the Gilroy Garlic Festival, sending dozens running for cover. Well, he had a uh, vest on, had a long sleeve, tactical shirt, cargo pants, boots. He was ready to do some, some damage. This morning, the victims. My son had his whole life to live, and he was only six. The overnight search for the shooter's motive, as we hear for the first time from first responders who rushed to the scene. We have an active shooter at the Garlic Festival. We have several victims found. We'll continue to have the very latest. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. I'm Laura Garcia. And I'm Marcus Washington. Right now, we want to get you out the door. Meteorologist Kerry Hawes. Coming into Livermore. We'll talk about this and also a look at the rest of the commute. It's coming up in about five minutes. Thanks so much, Kerry. Well, now back to that breaking news, which we have been following now for more than 12 hours. That deadly shooting rampage at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. It actually happened a little bit before 6 o'clock last night at Christmas Hill Park, where the festival has been held for decades. Here's the very latest. Three innocent people are dead, including a six-year-old boy. In the last hour, we received an update on the number of people injured. Gilroy police are now saying 12 people were hurt. Police responded in less than a minute, killing the gunman. He's not been identified, but sources tell our investigative unit the gunman was not on anyone's radar as a threat. Witnesses talked about a possible second person involved, but authorities are still trying to sort that out. We are expecting another news conference at 10 o'clock this morning. We've got team coverage of the shooting. Ali Wolf has the details on the youngest victim. Scott McGrew is outlining how the suspect got inside that festival. But let's start out with Bob Riddell at the scene. He has more on the harrowing moments. Bob? Well, Laura, the AP reports that one witness yelled at the shooter, shouted at him, why are you doing this? And the shooter responded, because I'm angry. Now, to get into the Gilroy Garlic Festival here at Christmas Hill Park behind me, you'd normally have to walk through metal detectors and get past security with wands. Well, according to police, the suspect, he cut through a perimeter fence, crossed a creek, and then entered the festival that way. A number of people saw him as he approached the northern part of the festival. Uh, they said he was a, a young man. Uh, he was wearing a camouflage shirt, a camouflage a cap, and he was carrying a long rifle. A woman selling honey here at the festival tells us two of her co-workers were shot. She watched the shooter reload and then ran for her life. Only 10, 15 feet away from us when he was loading his clip before he went to our booth and was shooting. But he was shooting random. He didn't just pick that booth. He was just shooting. He wasn't trying to, you know, anybody particularly, just anybody in his way, I guess. It was clear to you he wasn't targeting someone no, specific? he was just, just anybody. He was just shooting. What was going through your head as you're running away? I don't know, run, you know, save your life, you know, hopefully he doesn't start shooting this way, you know. It's just scary and wondering if there's any more, you know, and why, why would somebody want to do this, you know? It doesn't make sense. Why would somebody want to come in and kill innocent people, you know? And that's a great question that law enforcement is still trying to answer. Now, as we've been reporting, Gilroy police engaged that suspect within a minute after he started shooting, and officers did shoot and kill the, the man. Coming up in about a half hour at 6.30, we'll hear from a man who is uh, running a rock climbing gym for kids. We'll tell you what he did when that suspect started shooting. Reporting live here in Gilroy, Bob Rebell, today in the Bay. Thank you very much, Bob. And as we mentioned, one of the three people shot and killed by that gunman was a six-year-old boy. You see him right here. Stephen Romero died. Two other members of his family were also shot. It just breaks my heart because it's a festival for families. Yeah. NBC Bay Area's Ali Wolf live at Gilroy Police Headquarters with more from that little boy's father. He must be heartbroken, Ali. Yeah, absolutely heartbreaking, broken, Laura. And, you know, you, you mentioned it. It's a place where a child should be safe. It's a family-friendly event. And we did have an interview last night with Stephen Romero's father. As you mentioned, a lot of heartbreak, also a lot of shock. He spoke to us outside of the hospital not too long after getting the news. Alberto Romero reached out to NBC Bay Area. He also shared photos of Stephen. He says his son was a happy boy who had his whole life ahead of him. The six-year-old was at the Garlic Festival yesterday with his mother and his grandmother 
and he says his mother and grandmother were shot as well. Romero says his wife and mother-in-law were taken to a different hospital in San Jose where they were treated for their gunshot wounds. They are expected to be okay, but here's what he's had to say about losing his young son in such a tragic way. So hopefully they, they get the shooters and uh, basically that's it right now and I, I lost my son. There's nothing I really can do besides try to be with him until I could put him in his in his resting spot wherever that is. My son had his whole life to live and he was only six. That's all I, that's all I can say. And you can imagine what a difficult time it is for that father and for the entire family. Stephen Romero died last night at St. Louis Hospital. Alberto Romero tells us his wife was shot in her hand, and he thinks his mother-in-law was shot in her leg. Another really shocking uh, thing that he told us was that he actually found out about the shooting when he was at home. He got a call from his wife about the shooting that his son had been shot and his wife was also shot. So just a lot of heartbreak for this family and of course for the families of the other two victims. We don't know much about them at this point. Reporting live in Gilroy this morning, Ali Wolf for Today in the Bay. Well, Alberto and so many others are going through this morning. It's just really tough. Our prayers are with them. Now we've been showing you all a lot of video. Scott McGrew has been actually looking through the map to give us more perspective of how that gunman actually got into the area. Right, if you've never been down that area, you've got a good illustration. Uh, yes, I do. Marcus and Laura, we'll start with this one. You've seen this one before. In fact, you've shown the viewers this one. This is that broader area. Let's show it again. You've got the, the festival right here in Christmas Hill Park. Emergency responders staged here, and this was a triage and command center. This is a Gilroy High School. And then the family's told to come down here to the college so they could be reunited with their loved ones. As for the festival yourself, itself and the map that you were talking about here, we understand from the Gilroy police chief that the suspect or suspects crossed a creek. So that creek is right here. Here's the festival right there into a parking area. We think the shooting happened right about here at a rock climbing wall. We're going to talk to that person who runs that wall shortly. And also let's listen in as police start this frantic search. Looks like the subject might be in a creek south of Miller. He's wearing a camouflage hat, camouflage uniform, and he's got uh, a long rifle with a removal magazine. Now, police shot that man in camouflage within one minute of that first alert. As it happens, there was a police substation on the north side of the park, very close to where we think the shooting happened. Let's go back to that radio as they report the suspect down. We have a shooter down possibly in the northeast uh, corner of the park, uh, kind of north of the compound. As we've been reporting, gunmen killed three people, including that six-year-old boy, sadly, not the only mass shooting at a festival this weekend. In Brooklyn, one person killed 11 shot at Old Timers Day. That happened less than 24 hours before the mass shooting in Gilroy, our NBC station in New York City. It says so far there have been no arrests, and in that case, there's a suspected second suspect as well. Witnesses at that festival saying the exact same thing we heard in Gilroy. Laura, they said, why would anybody do this? It seems to be the continued refrain that we're hearing after all of these shootings. Thank you very much, Scott. No, no, yesterday you were actually down there. You got your own perspective of what was going on, what people were dealing with. So, so right. talk to us about what was all going on there when you were there. I got word of this shooting right before 6 o'clock, and actually I heard some of that scanner traffic. So I went down to the scene of the shooting. So many roads were already blocked off. I, I did a Facebook Live report, and it was really interesting to see all the people that were out just in front of their front yards. Gilroy's a very small community mm -hmm. down there, and, um, and people were just almost experiencing it together. They were all in shock. In fact, the streets that are marked off right there, the roadblocks that were set up, up. It was such a community effort just to even block up the streets. Some of the workers from the Gilroy Garlic Festival were manning these areas, trying to help police, and they were just coming in, law enforcement from agencies from throughout the Bay Area. There were ambulances, fire, um, police. The streets were lit up with sirens and, right. and all the blaring, um, the lights that were going on as well. But it was very frightening as well for people because there were three helicopters circling overhead because there were concerns that there was a second suspect. Right. Um, I didn't leave there till very late in the evening, but there was a certain 
eeriness about it and, and a lot of fear, I have to say, in that community as well. Well, did you see a lot of people, come, like you were saying, coming together to really help each other? Because you have to lean on someone when you're dealing with... Marcus, situations. there were people on literally every street corner where their cell phones, they were just out talking. Some of them just had a very stunned look. Some were coming from Christmas Hill Park who were, they'd been kind of trapped in there, hunkering right. down. And so they were almost, they almost numb. You know, you could see their expressions. They couldn't even speak. You know, it's very tragic. It, and I really feel like the South Bay is really feeling it, you know, together. Right. What the mind wants to do is put it all together and understand why, but really. Hopefully we'll get more information about the gunman and, and, you know, his intentions. Very, very tragic. That area, in fact, right now, still swarming with law enforcement teams and now FBI agents are involved. Again, we're expecting another news conference at 10 o'clock this morning. We're going to bring it to you live on air as it happens. We'll also stream it on NBCBayArea.com. Be sure to stay with us for all the latest information. You can find the latest on our website, as I mentioned, as well. 611 for you right now. And let's get a check of the weather and traffic for you this morning. Meteorologist Carrie Hall doing double duty for us. Yeah, we had such a... So the weather, that's coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Carrie. It is 613 right now. Coming up next, we're going to take you out east before the markets open. Big business headline that we're watching this morning, a potential mega merger in the pharmaceutical injury, the drugs impacted, and the potential profit. And all new for you this morning, of course, we're continuing our coverage of the deadly mass shooting at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. These are images from that chaos on Sunday. Online right now, interviews with witnesses, police, and more from the family of that little boy killed. It is 613 right now. You're watching Today in the Bay. Good Monday morning. Right now at 613, let's head over to Walnut Creek and get a look at our beautiful sunrise. Starting out all clear, our temperatures will be much cooler today compared to yesterday with some low 60s to start and we'll be in the upper 70s through early afternoon. And then getting a look at our Tri-Valley drive times as you get ready to head out on the road. It's been really slow coming through uh, westbound 580 from Grant Line Road. There's an accident there. We are starting to see things improving, but starting to slow down on westbound 84. So I'll talk more about that and a look at the forecast coming up in less than five minutes. Good morning, I'm Frank Holland at CNBC headquarters here at today's top business headlines. Stocks are set to open up, well, it's flat pretty much today as investors await an action-packed week on Wall Street. U.S. and Chinese trade negotiators are meeting in Shanghai for the first in-person talks since a truce was struck back in June. Investors are also awaiting the outcome of the latest Federal Reserve meeting. Most analysts are expecting the Fed to cut interest rates by 25 basis points. And it is the busiest week of the earnings season. The spotlight will be on tech giant Apple, due out with quarterly results on Tuesday. Meantime, a blockbuster deal this morning in the biotech industry. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer is merging its generic drug business with Myelin. The combined company, which will sell Myelin's EpiPen and Pfizer's Viagra, could bring in annual sales of more than $20 billion. Myelin stock is surging on the news, but it's down sharply from its 2015 high amid scrutiny of its price hikes on the EpiPen and a wider investigation into price collusion in the drug industry. And no cheat codes needed here. The world of Fortnite crowned a new champion yesterday. 16-year-old American Kyle Bugga Giersdorf won the video game's inaugural World Cup solo final in New York. Giersdorf, a Pennsylvania native, managed to skate past 99 opponents, earning 59 points through six games. The runner-up scored just 33. Giersdorf took home the trophy and a $3 million cash prize. Epic Games, the company behind Fortnite, awarded more than $40 million in prizes across the entire tournament. Mm -hmm. I wish I played. Back over to you. And you know what, Frank? He gets to tell his mom, see, mom, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, uh, no. Exactly. Yeah. Get that homework done. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I never had the same luck with uh, playing Madden. I don't think my uh, day's ever going to come. Mm, I don't think now. the potential of making that much money either. <laughs> I'll give you $2, though, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck with the right career. Stay where you are, Frank. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 619 <laughs> for you right now. And new today, call it another sign of the times. Instead of astronauts or scientists, well, a new dream career for many young kids is a professional YouTuber. In fact, a growing number of children and even teens are enrolling in YouTube camp. Now, this is a program that teaches everything from filming and editing to branding and marketing. But these camps, uh, a lot of people are wondering, are they smart way for those kids to really spend their summer? Well, we talked to one expert. This is what they had to say. 
when parents are looking at these camps, they need to make sure that the camps are being realistic with what they're promising the students, that they're teaching digital safety skills, and that they're also helping kids manage any potential negative feedback. I've learned like platform and like how to market yourself because like if you market yourself, you're set. Well, if you market yourself right, you're set. <laughs> She's a business I wish woman. she was that easy. She's a boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, on the Today Show, they're going to have much more on these camps coming up for you right after today in the Bay at 7 o'clock. I mean, just, you know, new generation. They can play video games and make millions of dollars or YouTube. Say, I, I prefer the, the summer coding camps. That I was going to say math, that's, that's science, better. STEM, mm -hmm. so important. Create your own app. Right. Do something, mm -hmm. you know, and make your new, net the next YouTube. How about that? Yeah. Okay. That's billions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're starting out this morning getting ready for a cool down and it was such a hot weekend. We have some welcome news as you get ready to step out the door. That's I'll have another look at this coming up in a few minutes. Thanks so much, Carrie. We we'll want to get back to that breaking news that we've been telling you about the shooting rampage of the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Shots were fired. You see right here people running for their lives. They were so frightened. All new overnight. One woman shared her reaction as that chaos unfolded. <laughs> he's just camouflaged and he's shooting people. <laughs> and please, guys, such prayers. Please, send prayers. The emotional effect on so many. At least three victims are dead, 15 hurt. Live team coverage is coming up at 6.30. You're watching Today in the Bay. Welcome back, everyone. It is 626, nearly three months after it started. Closing arguments said to begin this morning, the Ghost Ship Warehouse fire trial. Derek Almana and Max Harris both faced 36 counts of involuntary manslaughter, one count for each person who died in the 2016 fire. Prosecutors say that the pair violated terms of the building's lease and did not have important fire safe, safe, safeguards in place. The defense attorneys allege that the fire was an act of arson and something that Harris and Almena couldn't have prevented. Both sides rested their case two weeks ago. 627 Kaiser Permanente workers around the nation and here in the Bay Area begin voting today on whether or not to authorize a strike. Close to 100,000 service workers will vote. If a strike is authorized, it would likely include Kaiser workers at all Bay Area facilities and likely begin in October. Contract talks right now are at a standstill. Voting is expected to last for more than a month. 627 right now and next coming up for you at 630, a father's grief. My son had his whole life to live and he was only six. That's all, I, that's all I can say. What the family of this six-year-old boy gunned down at the Gilroy Garlic Festival wants people to know. We're live with team coverage of Sunday's deadly shooting rampage. Then at 645, a dramatic story unfolding in Italy. Two Bay Area teenagers arrested for killing a police officer. And overnight, the community said goodbye. We examine what's next for the teens, plus their local connections. You're watching Today in the Bay. When you, when you see this happen in other places, you think, that can never happen to us. You know, we were standing there, we're in the restroom, we walk out, I, tur I literally turn like this, and he's standing right there with this rifle. He's getting ready to put the, put the bullets in it. Right now on Today in the Bay, breaking news. A gunman going on a shooting rampage at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, sending people running for their lives. He just turned towards our booth and just started shooting, and we ran for our lives. You guys, if it looks like I've been crying, I have been crying for the past two hours. There's an active shooter at the Gilroy Festival. The tragedy among families. One of the victims, a six-year-old boy. This morning, heart-wrenching stories continue to emerge as a community is left heartbroken. And live pictures this morning from where it all happened yesterday afternoon. As we're getting more breaking news into our newsroom, police activity in a particular Gilroy neighborhood. We're working to bring you a live report. First, I want to say good Monday morning to you, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Laura Garcia. And I'm Marcus Washington. Right now, we want to get a look at that commute before you head out the door. It is a nice, cool start. Commute and weather, I should say. Nice cool start for us this morning, Carrie. I know you're doing double duty, so I got a little confused. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to be really hot. We talk more about that and also the weekend forecast. It's coming up in about five minutes.
All right, thank you, Carrie. Well, back to that breaking news that we have been talking about for more than 12 hours now, the deadly shooting rampage at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. It all happened a little bit before 6 p.m. at Christmas Hill Park, where the festival has been held for decades. Here's the latest. Three people are dead, including a six-year-old boy. And we just got an update from police. The number of injured is now 12. The gunman was also killed. He has not been identified. And witnesses talk about a possible second person involved, but authorities are still trying to figure out of that, sort it all out. Police did respond to that shooting in less than one minute. They've scheduled an update, a press conference coming up at 10 o'clock this morning. We're surely going to bring that to you. Meantime, we're just getting word of police activity in Gilroy. This is a neighborhood happening right now. It's not clear if this is actually linked to that shooting. But let's bring in today's in the Bay's Allie Wolf. She just got to that scene. What are you seeing out there, Allie? Well, Laura and Marcus, we just pulled up about 15 minutes ago to this quiet residential neighborhood. I'll step out so you can see what it looks like here. Uh, we see four uh, law enforcement vehicles, two from Gilroy Police, two unmarked vehicles where we saw uh, police officers and ATF agents walk in. We saw those uh, agents walk in with bags, possibly to collect evidence. As of now, we don't have confirmation that this is related to the shooting, but that's what a lot of neighbors are speculating to us. Of course, this is a quiet town and this shooting has really rattled a lot of people. And um, this activity really just picking up here in about last 15 minutes when we pulled up. That is when we saw um, these police vehicles pull up, sort of blocking off the entrance to this house as we've seen officers and agents go in and out. We also spoke to one neighbor who was uh, just getting up, leaving for work, and really startled to see this police activity. And he says that he and neighbors believe this is connected to the investigation at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, that deadly shooting that caused panic here in this area. Neighbors waking up a little concerned, wondering what is going on here. And we're working to gather more information. This is just about five minutes from the Gilroy Garlic Festival. So again, we just arrived here to this neighborhood and we'll see what we can bring you later in the newscast. Reporting live in Gilroy, Ali Wolf for Today in the Bay. All right, thank you very much, Allie. Like all the surrounding neighborhoods around there, there was a lot of tension in the air. Most certainly people were gathered outside of their homes. We'll continue to check back with her to see if there's any other developments. Well, now to the latest of that rampage, the actual scene itself. Eyewitness reports this morning describing just the sheer terror when they heard those shots. Yeah, today in the Bay's Bob Riddell, he's live there at the scene with more chilling accounts. And Bob, I can imagine even today, you can probably still feel, feel the the intensity in the air. Well, you still have law enforcement here. We know with members of the FBI, we've seen the sheriff's office, local police. Uh, they're all down there at the site of the, the shooting, continuing their investigation. One man who witnessed what happened here yesterday at Christmas Hill Park in Gilroy says what he witnessed was horrifying and that when he first saw the gunman, he knew that the gunman was ready to do some damage. That was his words. Uh, Ryan uh, Wallace, uh, he's from Auburn. Uh, he was running a rock climbing equipment gym for children at the festival. He thought the first shots were fireworks. Then he spotted the suspect who was wearing a vest, a long sleeve tactical shirt, cargo pants, boots. Uh, he says he just rose his gun up and started spraying rounds all around. Wallace wanted to run, but he felt responsible for the children on his rock climbing gym. In one of the kids' equipment, and uh, we had half of them up there, and so I was pulling them out, trying to get them out and run. Instincts kicked in, really, of just get the kids out and be safe. That was all I could really think of doing. I'm just kind of trying to cipher everything out in my head. Yeah, what do you do now? Exactly, you just kind of got to have your friends decompress, make sure you got your loved ones. Wallace eventually did run and hid under a trailer with some of the other vendors until it was safe to come out. Within a minute of the shooting, Gilroy police say their officers did shoot and kill that suspect. Now, coming up in about, I'd say, about 20 minutes, we'll tell you about the brief exchange of words between another witness and the shooter. Reporting live here in Gilroy, Bob Riddell, today in the Bay. All right, Bob, thanks so much for that update. Now the father of the six-year-old boy, Stephen Romero, who was shot and killed, is speaking out about the loss of his son. He tells us three members of the Romero family were shot. The boy was taken to St. Louis Hospital where he died. His mother and grandmother also among those shot. They're still recovering at a San Jose hospital this morning. Stephen's father says his son just celebrated his birthday at Legoland. He's heartbroken. I lost my son. 
nothing I really can do besides try to be with him until I could put him in his in his resting spot. Police are still at the scene this morning. FBI agents involved, as we've been showing you in live pictures. We are expecting another news conference. We should learn more at 10 o'clock this morning. We'll bring it to you live on air and online. Follow us, NBCBayArea.com, for the very latest updates. Well, 638 for you right now, and let's get a check of the traffic for you. Uh, been an issue in one part of the Bay Area this morning. Yeah, Sarah. the Tri-Valley parts of the East Bay really seeing the we'll talk about today. And we'll get a look at today's temperature trend that looks a lot cooler. That and traffic coming up in about three minutes. All right, thank you, Carrie. The shooting rampage in Gilroy, top national headline as well this morning. Next, we'll have reaction from across the country, including President Trump. Plus. And as I'm looking, I see a baby boy that's about the same age as my daughter. And we'll share our conversation with a woman who was at the festival when those gunshots started. How she says she hid for her life. Overnight in Italy, a final goodbye for a police officer allegedly murdered by two Bay Area teens and the controversy over how officers treated one of them. We're live at their former high school in the North Bay. And taking a look at the big board, the Dow is up 39 points there. A lot of people watching the big board today to see what will happen. Of course, we will continue to watch right here on Today in the Bay. It is 641. You're watching Today in the Bay. The time is 644 as you get ready to head out in the South Bay. It's a beautiful sunrise and mostly clear skies. And even though it looks warm and we had a hot weekend, it won't be as hot today. We'll go from the low 50s in Campbell to the mid 70s by early this afternoon. We already have a big backup at the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. So as you get ready to head out on the roads, plan a lot of extra time to get through this. A look at our drive times quickly through the East Bay from southbound 680 from 580 to Vargas Road. It's about 17 minutes and southbound 880 from uh, 238 to Highway 84. It's about 18 minutes. We'll get a look at the rest of our commute that's coming up in about five minutes. Thank you so much, Carrie. Quarter to seven right now. Back to that breaking news that we're continuing to follow a shooting rampage at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. We're hearing from witnesses who were inside the festival during those terrifying moments. Patrice Waugh was one of them. She was actually getting a sandwich from a vendor when she heard the gunshots. Now she ran with her four year old child and her husband to safety hiding out in a trailer. Then this happened. We stayed in the trailer. We were screaming. We were praying. We were doing everything. And so it stopped. So we thought after a while it had stopped, it was safe to come out. As soon as we tried to come out of the trailer, there were more rounds fired. So we went right back into the trailer and we stayed there until it absolutely stopped. Once it stopped again, we get out of the trailer. I go outside of the trailer and there was a guy standing there, one of the vendors, and he said, ma'am, you have a four-year-old baby, the girl right there. Please turn around and don't let her see this. There's a little boy coming. I don't want you to see it. But I couldn't turn away, but I turned my baby girl away. And as I'm looking, I see a baby boy that's about the same age as my daughter. You can hear the terror there in her voice. Now, while two other children, they ran to safety in another part of the park. Her family is now reunited this morning. It's tragic. Now, leaders in Washington, of course, they've been watching this situation in South Santa Clara County very carefully. Scott McGrew, I know the president was quick to respond on Twitter. He was tweeting out right as he got the news. Let's take a look at that. Law enforcement, he said, is on the scene of the shootings in Gilroy, California. Reports are the shooter has not been apprehended. Be careful and safe. Now, as we've been reporting, uh, the shooter was shot and killed by police a minute after the incident started, but police are looking for a second person that may have been involved. The governor says this is nothing short of horrific. Tonight, California stands with the Gilroy community. My office is monitoring the situation closely, grateful for the law enforcement's efforts and their continued work as the situation develops. And Senator Kamala Harris using much the same language, simply horrific. I'm grateful to the first responders again who are on the scene in Gilroy. 
My thoughts are with that community tonight. Our country, she says, has a gun violence epidemic that we cannot tolerate. Laura? Thank you very much, Scott. You know, we're getting some breaking news right now into our newsroom. We've just confirmed the name of the gunman involved in the Gilroy Festival shooting, Santino William Legan. We haven't confirmed his age just yet, but we've just confirmed through uh, Pete Williams from NBC News. We've been trying to do a lot of digging to try to find who the gunman is and right. now to try to understand a motive. Yeah, creating that terror all throughout the Gilroy uh, Garlic Festival there. Police taking him down within a minute of him uh, setting off those gunfires, shooting people, killing three there at the festival. Certainly a, just a terrific day, the terror that really plagued the entire community oh, uh, yeah, from completely. those shots. He snuck into the festival. He cut through a fence, went into the festival where we've been reporting there are thousands of people that go to the Gilroy mm -hmm. Garlic Festival over the weekend. And of course, we know how he opened fire and police, in fact, shooting him as well. We'll try to get more information on him. All right, and also we're following those developments from another story, a big one, this one out of the North Bay, spanning across the Atlantic Ocean. Two recent high school graduates are now in custody in Italy. They're accused in the deadly stabbing of a police officer. Today in the base, Pete Serratos joins us live in Mill Valley outside the school where both students attended. Pete? Dan, you know what, guys? The funeral for that officer actually took place in Italy this morning. Uh, we've been showing our viewers all morning long video from that service. We'll show it to you again. Uh, this taking place near that officer's hometown of Naples. Now, the officer killed was Carbonieri police officer Mario Rega. The funeral taking place this morning at the same church he was married at just last month. Now, here's the latest info we're getting from Italian authorities. They say that 19 year old Finnegan Lee Elder and 18 year old Gabriel Yorth, both both alumni here from uh, Tamalpais High in Mill Valley tried to extort 100 euros and a gram of cocaine from an Italian man who they claim ripped them off in a drug deal. But when plainclothes police officers arrived at this drop off site to confront the two suspects, Italian police say they struggled with those officers and that's when Rega was stabbed and killed. Now, police say the two barrier men apparently ran back to their hotel, packed their bags and were ready to leave the country before they were arrested. But this isn't the only investigation investigation underway. In fact, look at these pictures. These pictures emerging showing Yort blindfolded and handcuffed while being interrogated by police in Italy. Now, Italian police quickly responding to these pictures, saying they distanced themselves from the release and disclosure of the photos and are carrying out an investigation into this matter. As both of these investigations play out, neighbors for one of the suspects had this to say. I've never seen him violent. I've never seen him so much as push or hit anybody. Or yell. I've never heard him yell. Now, police documents say the pair confessed to the stabbing but blamed each other during the interrogation. And I want to point out that under Italian law, anyone who participates in a killing can be charged with murder. But these two suspects will remain in custody until the preliminary investigation is complete. We're live here in Mill Valley. Pete Serratos for Today in the Bay. Thanks for the latest, Pete. At 650 right now, we want to get a look at what we can expect from that weather today. Look at this uh, sunrise here. Beautiful start to the day. Yeah, it is a beautiful start to the day, and we're going to have some beautiful weather across the Bay Area. Looking forward to some cooler temperatures. Good. So we'll talk more about this and the forecast that's coming up in a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Carrie. 653 happening now. Baltimore, Maryland, the latest target of President Trump's Twitter attacks. The president calling the city, quote, disgusting rodent and rat infested mess. He said it after recent comments by Baltimore Congressman Elijah Cummings on conditions at border detention centers. The president says Cummings is too focused on the Mueller investigation and impeachment instead of his own backyard. Some, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, accused the president of racism. And next year on Today in the Bay, a quick look at those top stories, including the breaking news in the South Bay. A gunman shooting gunfire on the Gilroy Garlic Festival, sending people scrambling, and we're just learning the suspect's identity. Plus, it was horrifying. Coming up here on the Today, Today in the Bay, all the latest developments, including reaction from witnesses and the search for a possible motive. Plus, happening right now, live pictures from a Gilroy neighborhood. This is where investigators are surrounding a home. We're going to take you there live, coming back after the break. You're watching Today in the Bay. 
Welcome back. 656 right now. Before you head out the door, here are the top stories on today in the Bay. Of course, our breaking news. We continue to follow the deadly shooting rampage at the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Just a few moments ago, a federal source confirmed to NBC News the gunman is identified as Santino William Legan. We don't have any more details, including his age or where he lives, but we're working to get that information. Authorities did kill him during the rampage. Three victims were killed, including a six-year-old boy. The number of injured is 12. Police should give us another update at 10 a.m. Meantime, early this morning, authorities surrounded a home in one Gilroy neighborhood. Now, it's not clear if this massive presence there is actually linked to the shooting ramage, but rampage, but our Today in the Bay's Allie Wolf is there. Allie, anything new since we last spoke to you? Lauren, not much new since we just talked to you about 30 minutes ago. We arrived here about 40 minutes ago, and it was shortly after we pulled up that we saw four police vehicles surround this home here in this Gilroy residential street. Two vehicles from Gilroy police, two from the ATF. We saw ATF agents walk in with evidence bags, and they have been inside this house, I'd say, for about 20 minutes. Right now, we don't know if this is connected to the Gilroy shooting, but a lot of neighbors are speculating that is the case. We'll be out here to bring you more information throughout the morning. Reporting live in Gilroy, Allie Wolf for Today in the Bay. All right, thank you, Allie. Meantime, eyewitnesses this morning are describing that terror as the shots but were fired. And Bob Adele joins us live at the scene with more on their chilling accounts. Bob? Uh, Lauren Marcus, according to one report, one witness shouted at the shooter, why are you doing this? He responded, because I'm really angry. Uh, according to the police and witnesses, he avoided the security uh, checkpoint here at Christmas Hill Park, cut a hole in a perimeter fence, went across the creek, and that's how he entered into the northern part of the festival. Uh, people say he was dressed in camo. He had a camouflage shirt, a hat. He was carrying a long rifle, and then he was just shooting people at random. A woman selling honey here at the festival saw two of her co-workers get shot. She watched the shooter reload and then ran for her life. Uh, she tells us that uh, she said it just didn't make any sense. Why would anyone want to come in and kill innocent people? And that's a great question that law enforcement is still trying to answer. And as we've been reporting, Gilroy police did engage that shooter within a minute of when the shot started, and they did shoot and kill him. No, Reporting dead. live here in Gilroy, Bob Riddell, today in the day. So tragic for that community. Thank you, Bob. All right, 6.59 for you right now. We want to get you out the door this morning with those uh, look at the commute as well as the weather. Yeah, us. we're going to have some cooler temperatures today and a welcome change after a really hot weekend. We'll reach into the mid 80s today as well as the next few days and San Francisco staying in the 60s. Those winds picking up today once that fog clears. And as we take a live look outside in San Jose, Highway 101 really slowing down. We've got a new issue in the South Bay. I wanted to keep you updated to up to date on 101 uh, near Oakland Road the off ramp. There is a crash there and overall we are seeing a smooth flow of traffic. OK, right. we'll be back with another local news update. Of course, we're monitoring everything coming out of Gilroy this morning. Have a good day and please join us for our midday news in that press conference at 10.